This video is a bit of a mashup. It's about number systems representing information, analog and digital signals. One way to represent this number system is called base 10 arithmetic. You'll notice here on the right that 10 raised to the zeroth power is always 1. 10 raised to the 1 is always 10. 10 squared is 100. 10 cubed is 1,000. So this is our thousands column. This is our hundreds column. This is our tens column. This is our ones column. So let's say we have $8 represented right here in the ones column. We add one to it, we have nine. If we add one more, that means we have 10 ones. We represent this by making a carry to the tens column and this becomes zero. We have one ten, zero ones. Let's say we have $99, nine tens, nine ones. We add a dollar, what do we have? We have $100 which can be represented with this $100 bill and nothing else. With these four columns, we can count from zero to 9,999. This is a Burroughs portable adding machine. It's a mechanical calculator. And the way this work would work is you would punch in the number of pennies that you had, the number of dimes, dollars, ten dollars, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, and hundreds of thousands of dollars. If you pressed all nines all the way across the top and added one, it would overflow and become a million dollars, which you could print out of the paper tape, but you could not punch a million dollars directly into this machine. Computers do not use base 10 arithmetic, they use base 2 arithmetic. In other words, each column can count from 0 to 1. In other words, two states. 2 raised to the 0 is 1. I'm using a light switch here to represent the value, so it can either be 0 here or 1 if it's raised. We also use a single bit to represent the Boolean true or false. We can use it as a number or as a Boolean. If we create a 4-bit memory, you can create a 4-bit memory using these four switches. So here we have, this is the 1's column, 2 to the 0 is the 1's, 2 to the 1 are the 2's, 2 to the 2 is the 4's, 2 cubed is the 8's. Using the switches, we can use this as a 4-bit memory device, and depending on how the bits are set, we add, add or don't add these numbers across the top. So for example, if this bit is set, we have a 1. If this one is set, we have a 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. You can see the decimal equivalent at the bottom. A 4 plus 0 plus 0. Remember, 2 squared is 4. 2 squared is 4. We have nothing here. We have a 1 over here. So 4 plus 1, that's the 5. So on and so forth. 4 plus 2, 6, and so on and so forth, 8. And you'll notice we've raised this bit here, and this pattern here is going to repeat itself again, except we're adding 8 to the previous array of numbers that we calculated. Those four bits create what's called a 4-bit word. Commonly, we have what are called 8-bit words, known as a byte. An 8 bit byte has eight bits. This is a one half a gigabyte memory stick. Here's another half a gigabyte memory stick. One gigabyte is eight billion bits. If you're to represent using light switches the information that you can store in these two stacks of memory, you would need eight billion light switches. This is a table of decimal numbers from 0 to 15. A 4-bit number, those four light switches could be used to represent these decimal numbers. You can see the same pattern here in the binary column. This is the pattern that you just saw in the previous slides. Some people need to represent the number in base 8, octal. You don't see that very often. Commonly in certain applications you'll see people writing the number in hexadecimal because it's more convenient in certain applications. 
This guy here is John von Neumann. This is an electromechanical computer. These little cans down here on the bottom are very are, are memory devices. And John Newman said something very important. It wasn't obvious in today, but it's simple now. The numbers are whatever you, you want them to be. For example, the number 65, which is not on this chart, could be the number 65, or it could be the letter A, or the shade of a color, or it could be a computer instruction, like move, or add, or subtract, or branch. A common code in color code and graphics on a scale of 0 to 255, if you have, out of a scale of 0 to 255, if you have 204 red, 102 green, and 51 blue, if you convert that to hexadecimal, CC6633, you'll see the shorthand notion with a little hashtag in front. If you go into a paint program or uh, an Adobe Illustrator or something like that where you type in a color or you look at a web color, this is where this comes from. And CC6633 is Texas orange or Longhorn orange. The ASCII table is an open standard. It used to be companies had patents and proprietary representations of how they would represent the letter A. But now it's an open standard. And in the ASCII world, which is what we use today, if you have a number 65 in a memory location, you could interpret it as the letter, that's, that's the wrong A. If it's a capital A, it's a 90, I did this table wrong. It's a lowercase a is 97, which is right here. I'm confusing myself. A capital A is 65 over here. If you were to convert those to binary representations, you will see these are the binary patterns. Just know that uh, the important point here is what you store in a memory location, how you interpret it, it's up to you. A long time ago, one way to type in these 8-bit patterns, this is an MSI 8080 hobbyist desktop computer. You would load in all the bits and the addresses here and click these switches and you could load it into memory. And now we have keyboards and monitors and stuff like this. I said this is a mashup, I'm going to change subjects semi-dramatically here. Let's talk about analog signals. What is an analog signal? It's some representation of something that's varying over time. This is the axis, the time axis. This is some amplitude. Uh, you can think of sound waves, music waves, ocean waves, temperatures, many things represented as analog information. They're infinitely variable. On the Robo Rio, we take any sort of time variant information that we want to measure and put it into the analog input port. Now this signal here is infinitely variable and is continuous. I've put up a uh, picture of uh, the weather here so we can just follow this temperature chart here, 81, 80, 70, 65, so on and so forth. This is sort of an inconvenient, this is a convenient uh, lie when we talk about temperature, we talk about it in whole degrees because it's easy for us to understand how it's measured, maybe more accurately. You'll notice the plot here does not uh, instantaneously step from 81 to 80. It's, this is just uh, some sort of interpolation. The point I'm getting to here is that when we convert an analog and continuous analog signal to the digital domain to a to a number, we lose some information. If we were to take those four switches that you saw a moment ago, if we were to take those four switches that we saw a moment ago to represent the levels in this analog signal, we can count from 0 to 16. In other words, we can have 16 discrete states. And as we move across time, we're going to make a sample at a regular interval. You'll notice if you look, say, right here, at this time sample, we're not measuring the voltage right here. We're getting the closest approximation, which is here, the 13. If you come to here, the closest approximation, approximation is 15. So and so far, 14, even though it's really higher than that, it's probably 14 and a third or so, and so on and so forth. So when we sample the signal, we actually lose a little bit of precision, but it doesn't take very much room to store. It's only four bits per sample. 
So as you can see with the four bits, we have 16 levels, 0 to 15. And if we reconstruct a signal, if we're to have the computer play it back out through a digital to analog converter, we would not get this smooth, continuous red waveform. We would get this yellow staircase thing. Another feature of this particular example here is that it doesn't tell, you, tell us what we're measuring. It doesn't tell us what the scale is. We don't know if this is voltage or temperature or current or ocean wave or moon cycle or what it is. However, on the National Instruments Robo Rio, there's one thing we do know. We have what's called a 12-bit converter. 2 raised to the 12 is 4,096. We have 0 to 4,096 continuous steps, or not continuous steps, discrete steps that we use to measure whatever's coming in. The electronics is designed such that when the signal comes in, it has to be voltage. We're measuring a voltage, and the voltage has to be between 0 and 5 volts, which works out to a little bit over 1 millivolt per step. If you had to measure a microvolt or one millionth of a volt, this is not the instrument to do it with. You'll need a different solution for many reasons outside of this converter accuracy. Let's talk about digital signals. Digital signals are true or false. They're zero or one. They're the simplest to understand. True or false, zero or one. You only need one bit to represent the state of a, of a Boolean because that's what it is, true or false. You can do this with one switch. Up here on the upper left-hand corner, this is one of the earliest, it is the first microprocessor ever made. It is the 4004 microprocessor chip, made about 1972. It had a four-bit word. The byte hadn't been invented yet, at least in the microprocessor world. This is the 8008. It could actually handle an 8-bit byte. The 8080 was an extension of that. Then we come over here to the 8186, the 286, the 386, the 486, all the way across to Core i7, which you can buy in the store, Xenons, and even buy Core i9s in your local store. The 4004 chip had only 2,250 transistors, and the transistors in these processors are more complex implementations of basically what you saw with the light switch. The Intel Core 9, 1.7 billion transistors. 1.7 billion light switches is a lot of hardware. 